hours as part of a murderous spree. 19-year-old Antoine Montgomery and 21-year-old DeAndre Jennings. DeAndre spelled D-E-A-N-D-R-E. Jennings. Both are charged with first-degree murder for the killing of the female guard. They also face two counts of attempted first-degree murder for her partner, the 47-year-old male guard. They face, both Montgomery and Jennings face additional counts of attempted armed robbery in relation to this shooting. Both offenders, both Montgomery and Jennings, are also being charged in a double homicide that occurred in the 8700 block of South Saginaw that same day. Both are charged with first degree murder, murder, and one count of armed robbery for this incident. Montgomery is also being charged with one count of armed robbery and one count of unlawful restraint after robbing a Boost Mobile store that same day in the 6700 block of South Stony Island. Our officers, at great risk to their own personal safety, apprehended these very violent offenders in pursuit of justice for the victims of these crimes. And we will not tolerate violence in these communities. We will work around the clock, as you see here in the example of this case, to investigate these crimes and hold those violent offenders accountable. We at the Chicago Police Department have a clear message to these individuals. Commit these crimes and you will be held responsible. I would also like to highlight Chicago PD SWAT team and various other Chicago police officers who assisted in the capture of these two very dangerous offenders. And I'll turn it over to uh, Deputy Chief Muhammad uh, of the Bureau of Detectives to highlight more details of the case. Then I'll uh, come back for questions after uh, Commando Howard has a few comments as well. Good afternoon. I'll go through a uh, brief timeline of uh, the events that occurred uh, that day. So on the 15th of November at approximately uh, 10, 19 a.m., three armored car guards were servicing an ATM located at 83rd and Princeton. The offenders arrived in a dark colored vehicle. Three occupants then exit armed with handguns, two of them with handguns, one with a long rifle. These three off offenders approached the guards and a gun battle ensued. One guard was struck multiple times and she succumbed to her injuries. One guard was struck at that time in his lower extremities and was in critical condition. The third guard, who was not hit, but was able to uh, return fire on those offenders, did not strike any of those offenders at the time during that ex exchange. The offenders then jumped in their, into their vehicles and fled eastbound on e East 83rd Street. At 10.55 a.m., the offenders the offender's vehicle was captured on pipe and private video cameras entering a strip mall located at 6716 South Stony Island. This vehicle then parked and one of the offenders exited the car and, the, and entered the store. The offender was wearing the same clothing as pictured, as captured on the video at the uh, bank rob during the bank attempted bank robbery. While inside the store, the offender brandished two firearms and announced a robbery. The offender, one of the customers uh, at that point got on the ground while the clerk complied with the offender's demands. The offender then grabbed several cell phones and exited the store. At approximately 11.30 a.m., the 4th District officers responded to a call of a traffic accident located at 8708 South Saginaw on the east end of Chicago. Then the second call of shots fired uh, that came out was, was aired through dispatch. Upon arrival, they find the vehicle has struck a park, several parked vehicles as well as a tree. There, there were two occupants, a, drive, a front seat driver and a, and a front seat passenger in the vehicle 
both suffering gunshot wounds. The occupants were then pronounced deceased a short time later. Inside and outside of the vehicle were numerous packaged cell phones from the Boost Mobile that had just been robbed a short time before. A 911 caller informed dispatch that two individuals were observed running into a resident ru running into a residence located on the 8700 block of Saginaw. At that point, officers on scene surrounded that home and kept uh, constant surveillance while SWAT team was called. A short time later, occupants from that house came outside, surrendered to uh, police, and several individuals of interest were taken into custody at that time and detained and transported to Area 2 for further investigation. Short time after that, a search warrant was obtained for the residents, and shortly after, several handguns, including a long rifle, was recovered from inside of that home, as well as clothing and other various items that were necessary for our investigation. After that, a short time later, the charges were approved through the uh, ASA's office for the offenders that the superintendent previously mentioned. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank the individual who called 911 to give us the information, as well as certain witnesses that were on the scene who were courageous enough to give us information to help further this investigation to the point of where it, where it was. Uh, at this point, I will bring to the podium Commander Howard of the Area 2 Detective Division. Good evening. First, I'd like to thank the hard work of the Area 2 Detective Division, the 4th District, SWAT, and most importantly, the community. As the deputy said, this is a perfect example of how, when the community comes together, they have trust with the police department, we can bring cases like this to an end like, like you're seeing now. So again, I'd like to thank the community, Area 2 Detective Division, the 4th District. Thank you. And before I take questions, I just want to highlight uh, the Bureau of Detectives cleared more homicides uh, this year than we have in 15 years. And our homicide clearance rates, rates range from 45% to 65% across uh, the city. So, again, accolades and, and a lot of encouragement to our Bureau of Detectives continue the hard work. Uh, we really are grateful for their hard work on this particular case and bringing two very violent offenders to justice. And and uh, last but not least, thanks to the community for coming forward and helping the department. I think it is an example, like Commander Howard says, how the community coming forward helps us do our job. And without the community, we can't do our job in, in, in ways that the city of Chicago deserves. With that, I will take a few questions. At this point during our investigation, we believe that there were four individuals involved in this. Two were arrested and charged. The other two were the victims inside of the vehicle that was uh, on the 8700 block of Saginaw. So those two individuals, we believe, were the other two offenders that were uh, involved in the armored car. Brian. So basically, this is there's no honor among thieves. And after the robberies and murders, they got into an altercation with each other. And two are deceased and two are charged. Any other questions? Thank you very much.